Hello guys and welcome to another spicy episode of EU4 Mayo and Texas mod playing here is uh, Silvara Nabumi. We're doing fine, we're doing just fine. Our income has been ballooning in the last couple of episodes. Uh, it's very good of course. Uh, the only thing that annoys me a bit is that I have absolutely no idea why we have so much money. Um, so that's interesting. I mean, we are controlling a lot of trade nodes, essentially, yeah. Got 95 in our home node, we got 45 control in the Bengal node. That's temporary though, because I'm stealing trade power from Bengal, because I because I want to. Uh, yeah, quite a big amount of power though in the uh, Indochina node, or the, what is it called? Yeah, the China Sea? The China Sea, really? Honestly, I would have thought that that would sort of be uh, a name that would be controversial to the point where they would not include it in the mod. But, hey. Points to the Mayo and Zaxxas team, I guess, for being brave about memes. Uh, but yeah, we're doing, we're doing fine. We're doing great fine. Uh, uh, the road network has been established. We have roads stretching to Ava. Might want to push it a bit further north. But that's something I'll fuck about with off screen. That's a good point actually. I have a lot of manpower. I should build more roads. Uh, I have a, like a nice little circle of roads in the central part of Southeast Asia here. Uh, as you can see the autonomy is pretty good in these provinces. Then again I'm pretty sure that actually uh, is not that relevant to roads. It's actually a thing that depends on the fact that I have made these places a state. So, still though, that's that's very good information because it really proves how autonomy is determined by whether or not a place is a state and not by the fact that you build roads to a place, you know? So what that tells me is that we should invest in roads in... Um, or honestly, maybe we shouldn't fucking bother with roads at all. Uh, but yeah, we should invest in roads in um, in places that are already states. So yeah, talking about in extending the road network northwards, uh, we should pro. Oh, never mind. I have already. Well, I don't know if I've built that road, but I guess we could do a road in uh, this place. Let's do that. Uh, construct road. Contribute manpower. Yeah, we have a lot of it. Pay off the remaining, unless we can negotiate. Ah, excellent, there we are. Free roads. That's a good point, actually. I should just, like, sneak around and keep an eye on um, on the provinces to make sure, or, like, keep an eye on the local wealth. See if I can abuse it and spend the local wealth on roads without the locals being able to do jack shit about it. <laughs> God damn it, E4, hunting accident. Piss. It's such a shame as well, because I actually... Th this guy is named after a guy in my uh, Victoria 2 multiplayer. Bikinu is uh, an excellent dude, by the way. So, it's a shame that he died. But why would I not choose Oh Well? Losing 10 prestige compared to losing stability. Yeah, my stability is not actually infinite. Uh, so far in this campaign, my stability has been just never-ending. This is very bad though. We are in a bad position. Uh, we might get a disaster, civil war and stuff like that. Hopefully this guy can breed. I think Buddhism allows you to have multiple wives. Well, maybe not multiple wives. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Buddhism says anything about it, but you can still like combine Buddhism with Confucianism. And I know for a fact that Confucianism allows you to have multiple wives. Well, at least the Emperor gets to have that. And we are the Emperor, so... Well, Emperor of Suvarnabhumi. Not of Ming, of course, but you know. You know how this works. Also, yeah, I forgot that I was going to be upgrading the capital. I'm gonna build a uh, Mayor's Palace. Get that extra... Uh, urban Gravity. It's going to be quite good. Uh, I don't know what the urban saturation... Did I build it in the wrong province? No, I did not. Good. 
Uh, I don't know what the urban saturation area is. Let's have a look. Administer. Huh, you can change urban pa urban goods? Didn't I know you could do that, but now I do. Um, examine province. Yeah, so the urban saturation has reached 100%. So it's, it's good then that I'll build a building. Uh, I'll keep the capital growing. Uh, I, I do want the um, the paper industry to increase so the idea is that we'll increase the urban population and that will allow them to have more capital there's a lot of local wealth there as you can see a lot of urban wealth uh, hopefully they'll be able to invest in um, in uh, buildings that increase the uh, urban production so we can get more paper because uh, paper is supposed to give you a uh, discount to ideas. I don't know if you have an. I don't know if we have enough paper to actually get that discount. Uh, I think we can check that. Yeah, we're cultured. Pretty good actually. We should get more cultured. We do not actually have any urban production bonuses. That is really bad actually. That is extremely bad. Because I have a lot of good cities. Um, but I think that tells me something. Because I've been splitting up my urban industries into different sectors. Uh, but none of the urban industries are actually large enough to... To give me any urban bonuses. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good thing to know. Because that means you should probably choose one of the urban industries and then just focus on that to get the bonus. Especially if you're playing a blobby meme empire like I am. Speaking of blob, uh, yeah, we can blob into Khmer, I think. I don't think there's anyone stopping us from doing that. No, there's not. Uh, so we'll do that. And there it is. I have completely occupied Khmer. I'm gonna get a diplomat. Let's see. We don't need to invest in Delhi anymore because I was doing that just because of the mission. The burgers can gain control. That's always a good thing. So I shall never complain about that. I'll take all the provinces. Uh, the Qing will be pissed about this. But once the Qing stop being pissed about it, we will be borderline divine. So how salty are you about that, Ching? Hmm. Not actually that salty at all. So, um... Guess who did not actually pay attention to anything at all? If you guessed me, then you guessed correctly. I just went over 100 over extension. Um, but honestly, the thing that's like actually surprising me is the fact that it does not actually seem to to matter like at all. I mean, removing the bullshit generic limit to overextension that sounds like the kind of thing that Mayo and Texas people would do, or the developers. I mean, still though. Surprising. It is very surprising that they would do such a thing. Actually, no. That <laughs> The whole point was that, no, it is in fact not at all surprising. But it's still like a shock that they did that. Um, okay. That is a lot of Cambodian rebels. 41,000. Okay, so I guess there are consequences to going over the infamy limit. Oh, uh, infamy limit. Um, yeah, I might want to build some more troops. Alright, the Khmer's have risen up. Um, I was able to... Well, actually, that's a lie. I did not at all predict that they would rise up on this province, but I noticed that these two provinces did not have any natural defenses, or not natural defenses, uh, defenses from the nobles and the local, you know, people who build... You know how it works in, uh, in um, 
local fortifications. That's what it's called. So I made sure that I was standing in provinces. I mean, oh yeah, look at that. Honestly, did I even need to build an army? I don't know if I actually did. But, uh, but I did. And now we can core all the provinces. And so we shall wait for our, for our glory. This, however, does sort of imply, uh, after I convert some Hindus, um, I think it's time to end our subject relation with China. I do not see why would we would want to stay a vassal. The only thing I could possibly want is make Diviet a vassal. But that would require way more uh, investment than I am willing to do right now. Because I need to conquer half the thing and I don't want to do that. Ah, uh, he converted back to the bullshit type of Buddhism. Well, at least it's not Confucian. Hmm. Yeah, that's right, I married him. Eh, I don't know. I guess I'll tolerate him being the wrong religion. Um, because I really, really, really do not want to be a vassal of China anymore. So I think we'll cancel it. Unless I am... Oh, double check. Double check. Always double check. Double check everything. Um, so I see no nations that I would want to invade that is a tributary of China. And as a result, I will take the momentous decision to finally cancel tributary. We will lose the stability, but the amount of money we shall gain will be glorious. We have become a great power! Oh, really? Yeah, that is impressive. Hopefully that'll stop the Chinese from being bitches. Still have good trust. But uh, you'll be able to notice, I mean, they've already rejected one of their offers, but you can notice that they will uh, they will keep asking for me to be a tribute. And uh, ah, there's a mission effort to placate the Ming. Uh, broke tributary. Yeah, and okay, and we're not going to be able to do that anytime soon. They actually desire provinces. That could be very dangerous. Well, we're still married to them. Yeah, here they come. Er, do you want to be a tributary? No. And there goes our fucking trust with them. Trust that has been built up in hundreds of years. Gone in an instant. Oh shit, fuck, that's bad timing. The king is dead. Or the emperor, I should say. Gotta give, me, give him his proper title. Uh, I lost the stability because of the bitches who this... Fuck, where did my legitimacy go? Damn! Emperor Rayma the First. Wait, that's a different dynasty. Hmm. That's uh, that's interesting. Interesting indeed. So we have uh, become a different dynasty for some reason. I never quite understood why. We're gonna have quite an adventure to get back up to proper legitimacies. Yeah, yeah, the whole nation is about to revolt. And we have a crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, our nation is actually collapsing right now. This is insane. You can look at the revolt risk here. Uh, the Bengalis just revolted. We were able to kill them quite handily, but I've sp already spent an insane amount of admin, I mean military points, to keep this stuff in check, because this is getting out of hand, man. Well, at least the air is good. So, there you are. Six admin, eh, and a marriage. Excellent. Well, the fucking Lang Zong, the Lao Si, yeah, they're okay. Alright, so I am back recording. Um, I had to take a break the previous recording session and I just got back and I mean I must have been seriously mismanaging my country because the fuck is going on here? Everyone and their mother is revolting. What the fuck is this? 
37,000 troops? That's no joke, man. That's a lot of, a lot of troops, Dad. That's like, yeah, there's more troops than in my entire army. That's ridiculous. Um, I also have a civil war looming. I have internal conflicts potentially looming. Uh, unrest lower than zero. Well, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen, is it? Huh. Like ever, because of the events that this mod throws at you. And it looks like I'm marching west to fight Bengal. I mean... Uh, I cannot even invade them. I don't know what the fuck uh, last recording session me was thinking. This is ridiculous. Alright, so I realize now what I was doing over here. I killed the massive stack of Bengalese separatists. And also the reason why my nation is doing so hard is because of famine. There's a terrible famine in some of these provinces, which gives 16 local unrest. So India is struggling. China is doing fine, though. They don't have too much famine. Uh, then again, famine is not necessarily something that spreads, is it? It's just... I don't know. I mean, it's, it's logical that we have famine. Uh, because as the comment section has pointed out to me, there are no plagues in uh, Asia, uh, which means that uh, the population have a might have a tendency to get very very high, like way over the. Um, uh, let's see, like over the uh, saturation. Yeah, it's twenty seven percent over the rural saturation right now, which of course means that they don't have the carrying capacity really to support that many troops. Uh, fuck you. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm wasting all my military points essentially trying to like time these revolts so that I have my army in the general vicinity. So I'm really hoping these Shan separatists will have some fun now. There they are. Fuck me, of course they're gonna spawn in provinces I don't have forts in, which is just gonna mean that these rebels are bound to succeed. Sufi missionaries? Uh, no. Yeah, sure, let's just get even more. Wow, really? Religious riots? Fuck, that's... yeah, the nation is not doing too hot, is it? Uh, Long Zong, can I afford having them revolt? Maybe. Oh, interesting, so a Sunni rebellion has been crushed, and we can actually deport the rebel supporters, which I think we should totally do. Get some war exhaustion, get fanaticism. I mean, we're fully fanatic already, I think. Not really, but... Full fanaticism is fine, actually. I mean, we're not going to get any of the bonuses from secularism anyways. So we might as well go all out fanatic, you know. Deport the scum. Does that... Yeah, look at that. The province that had Muslims in it uh, is now Theravada. The minority still exists, 40%. So, you know, that's the thing. But there are... Yeah, there's now Theravada community over here as well. So we are converting our provinces. Uh, even if it is a bit slow. <laughs> The Particularists have risen up as well, so we're going to murder them. Yeah, the rebels die super easily. That's like a... Like, that's not this... That's not the problem. The problem is that it takes a while to move around. Hey, conversion. Duck luck. I assume that's like the one province we can convert. Um, still though, I could do with some more missionary strength, because converting with that stuff is a bit insane. So like... Some sort of missionary dude. But again, I'm not going to pay a billion monies for missionary strength, so let's do that. The Vientines are the next, although it looks like the famine... Yeah, the famine has died down. So those who start to death have start to death. People die, stuff breaks, and we have survived the rebellion. Uh, it was not optimal. The rebels did take a province here and there, which of course means that they... Um, uh, put treasury... Uh, do I need admin right now? What are my ideas? I don't remember nothing. God damn it. Uh, no, treasury. Give me money. Uh, I have a lot of money though. That's at least good. Wish I could like pay for legitimacy. Actually, no, I, I wish I couldn't because you can do that in a normal game. But that's stupid actually now that I think about it. So, Thank God for realism even if it hurts. Alright, so facing extreme per persecution of... I'm going to try again. Uh, facing extreme persecution from the Theravada faith, our heathen subjects have gathered together a special tax, which their leaders offer us if we will grant them mercy and allow them to stay in Suvarnabhumi. Uh, gold will not sway our mind. 40 gold? Are you mad? 
We are expelling heretics here. That's like what we're doing here. That's like the point of our godly or... I guess we're not... Well, no, the Buddhists are godly. Uh, they have gods. So some Buddhists have gods. Um, some Hindu gods are generally accepted in... Uh, ooh, Jain! There's a Jain province in India? How cool. A uh, majority Jain anyways, what I meant, but still. Hey, there's even some Theravada Buddhism going on over in Ahmabad. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Jain. What, how, what does da Jain do? Less manpower, but extra tolerance, less idea cost, extra missionary strength, and trade efficiency. Mmm. <sighs> yeah, I can taste that spiciness. Pretty good, that. I mean, our religion is pretty awesome as well. Um, yeah, tolerate, tolerance of heathens plus two. I forgot it was that good. But again, I actually don't care. Like, I'm not here to tolerate. I'm here to convert. So, uh, it's kind of pointless, to be honest. But, you know. That extra missionary strength is actually better than the Jain one, so... I guess we're good in that sense. Yeah, look at that! The whole state actually is officially Jain! The Great Chiefdom of Bastar is uh, the one Jain nation in the world. Yeah, uh, getting distracted here. Uh, Gold will not change our mind, we'll instead take that excellent little conversion bonus and we will begin the conversion of Dark Luck. Uh, fuck, did I ever get that conversion dude I wanted? No. No, I did not, because I keep getting these shit advisors. Go away! Ah, they're so expensive to retire as well. I could have built so many buildings. If only these dipshits would give me an advisor I can put to use. <sighs> ah, never mind. There it is. Inquisitor. Go, go. Go, go, Inquisi Inquisition, go. Awesome. So that's happening. Also, I, I this, this whole expulsion event is actually pretty awesome. Um... A lot of Muslims left the country when we uh, expelled them. I mean, obviously. But yeah, the Muslim minorities that used to exist... Oh, okay, there are still some. There are 10% 10, 10 Muslim here. Still though, I, I dare say there's a significant decrease in uh, Muslim presence. A lot of animism going on, but... Well, I guess whenever a minority is in an... Yeah. Whenever a minority exists, uh, it doesn't matter what type of minority they have. Well, at least not between these things. I guess we can, if we find some heretic minorities, I guess we can have a look and see. Yeah, there's Mahayanas here. So 10% Mahayanas gives you 0 0.6 unrest, while 10% Animists give you the exact same. So no matter whether a uh, religion is a heresy or a heathenry, in your view, that does not matter. It's all the same. That's all fine though. Uh, yeah, we do have a crisis looming. We might see a civil war popping up soon. Might just wanna... yeah, it's gonna be popping up in three years. I don't know if we can actually avoid that. No, no we cannot. Or... well, maybe. No. No, no, we need 0% overextension, and that's just not... Who's Temper Stage? Eh, let the rebels do whatever, honestly, at this point. I'm used to it. Anyways, though, uh, we do have some good cash, so we should probably build some buildings. Maybe even upgrade our capital a bit. That stuff is very expensive. We could try and max out our, our uh, government building, but that's actually way more expensive than we can afford right now. A world-famous university, though. That does sound pretty nice. It's either that or a civil arts academy. Um, a lot more art power that comes from this. Uh, it requires culture idea groups, which I assume we have, because, you know... Yeah, we do. I guess we'll build that, uh, just because, you know, we have culture ideas, so we should be super cultural. I honestly have no idea what culture actually does. Like, I think it it um, it it has something to do with your um, your technology spread. So, like, if you have better culture, the it affects the or art power or you know it, that's a part of culture. Um, it increases the spread of institutions. Uh, then again, it's not like well, no, yeah, we'll be able to down banking, and that is spreading nicely. Um, 
but getting renaissance will take a while quite a while indeed yeah we're over half the way through the game i mean renaissance has not even spread to like norway and northern germany yet so i guess i shouldn't be complaining too much but then again there, there's renaissance in gujarat it should be able to trade its way over here i mean yeah, you can see that it has, it's generally spawning in trade places. It spawned over, or it, it moved to Herat. And from Herat, it's been spreading. I guess bulk is a trade thing as well? Yeah, it is. So having those is important. I think if, yeah, if, if the institution you want exists in the same trade node that you own a trade center in, that's when you start getting it, which, yeah, hmm. So really, we need to... I mean, exactly how it spreads from trade zone to trade zone, I'm not sure, but... I mean, maybe I should know that, but I don't, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a while, because it needs to go all the way around these trade zones here. Like, these trade zones are trade zones are quite big, so, like, from Venice to the Straits of Hormuz, it's, what? That's four trade zones. But from Kutch to, to our trade zone, it's... Yeah, I mean, it's five, so it, it's longer to get over here than it was to get all the way to Hormuz. Pretty nasty that. Oh, Persia is expanding. Look at that. The great Persian Empire. Tehran? Tehran? Is that... <laughs> Lol? Oh... Okay, so the actual city of Tehran is in Persia. It's not the capital though. Where's the... Oh, it's over here actually. Tabari. Is that your culture? No, it's Persian. But you, you do like the locals here though. The Tabaris. And there's Shia as well. Or shit. <laughs> I can see why they changed it in the normal game, because having a religion called shite, or yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not very nice of you know life and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Ooh, Tabriz. Oh, that's a separate nation. They just have the same color. Yeah, I don't know what I didn't think about that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, I think we'll end the episode here. In the next one, we will... I don't know, to be honest, what we'll do. Um, we could go start invading over here to get some more trade money. I mean, that is the natural way to expand. Um, don't see why I would want to blob too much more into Bengal. The pops here are so massive that I keep annexing a bunch of uh, upper-class pops that need to be educated in order to uh, keep my education levels high. So... Don't know if how much more I want to blob into here. Plus it's all Muslim and yeah, I don't know. We'll swoop in here instead and try and save these uh, Theravadas down here, I think. Maybe try and put this the final nail into the coffin of Majapahit and try and release some more vassals to, to really fuck him up a bit. Yeah, the guy's suffering from some really nasty famine right now. So that, that is good to see. So yeah, anyways, thanks so much for watching and until next time, bye.